I want to wish my man Tony LaRusso here, man, a happy 60th birthday. Give it up for Tony, man. Do you ever think we lived to be 60? Never. I never thought. I just turned 40 a few months back. I never thought I'd live to see 40. But there's always those ages you never think you're going to live to see. When I was 20, I never thought I'd live to see 30. When I was 30, I never thought I'd live to see 40. Now that I'm 40, I just want to see my feet again. <laughs> it's out there somewhere. But there is. And those increments, they get smaller as you get older. So say you live to be 70, then it seems like every year you're saying it. If I only make it one more year. If I only make it one more year. Next thing you know, you're 80. Now you just want to make it through three meals in a day. <laughs> By the time you get to dinner, you don't know who's going to be finished first. You're the pork chops. <laughs> it's no fun getting old, I'm telling you. Now you can't grow hair where you always had it. You're growing hair out of places you never thought possible. <laughs> and by that time, it's too late. By the time you decide you need that nose trimmer, you're there for a reason. <laughs> you don't prepare for that kind of thing. So now you're in line at Walmart. You got the nose trimmer in your hand. You got these two big bushes sticking out of the end of your nose. And the lady in the counter is just staring right at you. And you know what she's thinking. ZZ Top. <laughs> How did you let it get this far? And what did you use on that thing before you used the nose trimmer? A comb? I'm not telling you, it's no fun getting old, because now you got to start worrying about the doctors, you got to start getting that physical every year, it's like to start watching what you eat. I just got my first physical in over 20 years. The doctor got done with me and said, Doc, be honest, how do I stand? He said, that's what I want to know. <laughs> Then he, proceeds, then he proceeds to tell me I've got to take a tiny little white pill every day for the rest of my life. I can deal with that. So on my way home, I pick up the prescription. There's seven pills in it. <laughs> Big, bold letters right on the container. Absolutely no money pills. <laughs> That's just my luck, right? I noticed another thing about getting older. You tend to get more and more religious as you get older. I noticed that too. I was never religious growing up. I turned 40, I just picked up my first Bible the other day. I've been reading it ever since. I feel like I'm cramming for a final. <laughs> Tom, you're getting old, man. It's no fun. But, uh, I had a brain fart. <laughs> But seriously, man, thank you. More, give it up for Derek Tennant, man, one more time for having me out. Give it up for my friend. But there's one thing that does make me feel young, makes me, brings me back to the, my youth, and that's good weather. Like a day like today makes me feel young again. Makes me start thinking about being a kid again, being a child, like when we were all running around playing games all night. There's one game that we always played when we were kids, and I liked it the best. It was hide and seek. And we all we played that till all night, and every once a year, all the grown-ups would get drunk enough to come out and play with us. <laughs> and that all ended one year when we found my father and the lady across the street. <laughs> they were hiding in a cheap hotel in Pittsburgh. <laughs> start taking care of myself. No, I'm not going to wait like my family. They always do everything in the last minute, like my grandfather. 80 years old, decides he's going to quit smoking. <laughs> Took him six strokes before he decided to quit smoking. <laughs> he had more strokes than, than Stevie Wonder on the back nine of Sawgrass. <laughs> my mother, 70 years old, she decides she wants to start walking every day, five miles every day. It's been three years, we have no clue where she is. <laughs> but 
there is, there's something about that nice weather that brings out the best in people, you know. I think that's why when you go down south, everybody tends to be nicer down there and more friendly. So I'm in a restaurant, or I'm in a traveling down, down south, and I'd stop at a gas station just to fuel up, and I asked the lady behind the counter for a nice place to go, and she points me out about 15 miles down the road. So I said, okay, I'm going to go, you know. She, she told me it's the best place around, i got to go. So when I get there, just like any other good restaurant, it's packed. And it's just me, so I'm like, oh, maybe they can squeeze me in. Hmm. So I go in. She said, oh, it's going to be a three-hour wait. And I said, oh, just my luck, you know. So as I'm leaving, there's a, three people sitting there with an empty seat at their table. It's a mother, a father, and a son. And they offer me the seat, so I'm like, Oh, that's great. You know, only down south. That wouldn't happen in New York. <laughs> so I sit down at the table, and it's a little awkward because they already got their food, and I didn't even order yet. Nobody's really saying anything until the kid chimes in. Pa, can you pass the bread? And the father just ignores the kid. But another minute goes by, and the kid says again, Mom. Can you pass the bread? And now the mother ignores the kid. So now I'm thinking, is this kid not supposed to have bread? <laughs> is he in trouble? Should I pass him some bread? Should I just mind my own business? And then I'm thinking, wherever the heck I am, guns are probably legal, so I'm just going to mind my own business, enjoy my meal, and get out of Dodge. So now the kid decides to climb up onto the table. He crawls across the table grabs a slice of bread, crawls back across the table, sits back down and starts eating. Now the father says, Mom, well how old is that there boy? She said, I believe he's this dang man 14 years old. Well don't you think it's time we buy that boy a pair of pants? <laughs> Did you see what he just drunk through the gravy? All right, man, I got, I'm going to split, man, but before I do, I want to give it up for Derek one more time, and I want to uh, give you a little bit of history on my side of the front, you know? Derek was always, seriously, a huge influence on me since I met him in fifth grade, and, uh, you know, he was a star athlete, Mr. G here, I'll tell you, phenomenal musician. I mean, everything the kid touched seemed to turn to gold, man. And to, to make a long story even longer, when he turned uh, 14, tragedy struck and he ended up paralyzed. And uh, not, not knowing if he's ever going to walk again, he uh, ends, up in a wheel, ends up in a wheelchair for a number of years. And the first thing my sick and twisted mind says when he's in this wheelchair is, Yes! Finally going to beat that kid in basketball. <laughs> But that never happened. <laughs> I did find a good defense, though. The old broken broomstick handle and the spokes. Uh, that worked every time. I think that's when he decided he has to learn to walk again. But Derek could have felt sorry for himself, or he could have let other pe people feel sorry for him, or he could have, you know, gave up on life, but he didn't. He found new mountains to climb, found new talents to perfect, and he made it, that tragedy into a success. Derek Tennant, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.